Our next topic is systemic thromboembolism. And that is an embolism that is in the systemic or the arterial part of your cardiovascular system. 80% of these come from intracardiac moral thrombi. Moral refers to the arteries or to the heart. Intra is within. Cardiac obviously refers to the heart. So that 80% of these come from clots that are inside or blood clots or thrombi that are inside the heart. 75% of, of this 80%, so you have 75% come from wall, uh, the left ventricular wall. So, you know, if you have a little blood clot here, a little blood clot here, a little blood clot here, the majority of this 80% come from moral thrombi that are associated with the ventricular wall. Uh, 25% of this 80% come from, um, if you have mitral valve disease, where this mitral valve is not functioning properly, what you have is this left atrium here begins to dilate and become larger, which messes up the flow, the blood flow, and one of the, according to Verco's triad, if you remember in the previous videos, one of the ways that blood clots form is through um, turbulent blood flow <coughs> or stasis in blood. So as this left atrium uh, dilates, then that is prone to have more blood clots. And so 25% uh, 25 come from the left atrium secondary to mitral valve disease. The remainder 20% the remainder 20% comes from uh, aortic aneurysms, comes from uh, valvar vegetations, and from valvar vegetations, and from if there's any kind of artery that has atherosclerotic plaques in it, it comes from ulcerated atherosclerotic plaques. Ulcerated atherosclerotic sclerotic plaques. So you can see that you know 80% comes from you know, blood clots that are already within the heart, and the 20% comes from uh, just different sources, mainly aortic aneurysms, valvular vegetations, and ulcerated atherosclerotic plaques. So what happens is that in the lungs, uh, in the venous system, when you get uh, a thrombi, if you get a blood clot, and then you get a piece breaking off, that usually gets trapped in the lungs. But in the systemic thromboembolisms, you're having it, you're having it on the ar arterial supply. And if you can imagine that this left ventricle, the majority comes from this left ventricle blood clots, it comes up and it can, you know, take any one of these side chains from this aorta. You know, it could go down into the legs and the even though that the they can potentially go anywhere, 75% um, of all arterial embolisms end up in the lower legs, and 10% end up in the brain. So it takes some of these offshoots, goes um, cephalad towards the head, and they lodge inside the brain. The other side, the other sites are in the intestines, the kidneys, and the spleen. So the arterial blood supply um, can attack, you know, any any place in the body, but the majority is in the lower extremities, in the legs, and 10% in the brain, and a smaller portion of that goes into the intestines, kidneys, and spleen. And when the thrombi enters or or gets clogged in the arterial blood supply of the lower extremities or brain, usually it leads to ischemia. Usually it leads to ischemia, necrosis happens, and um, it's, it's a big, big problem. And just to remind you that sometimes when you get the, the venous thrombi or the venous embolism, you know, they, they, it comes up here through the inferior vena cava or through the superior vena cava into the right atrium, and if you have holes in your heart, if you have inter, or if you have ventricular, uh, a hole, if you have a hole in the 
interventricular septum or the intraatrial septum, you, you know, the, that thrombi or that em, em, embolism can pass right through the uh, that hole in your heart and go over onto the left side of your heart and then sh get shipped out into the systemic sim systemic circulation and cause a systemic thromboembolism and that is called a paradoxical embolism all right we'll see you in the next video